Good morning, students. So now today we will be again studying the chapter that is uh, from science one section of uh, chapter number 13, carbon and important element. And uh, you all uh, have known me from so, uh, so many times and I have given my introduction to all the time. So today I would like, okay, you only just read about it and get yourself So as I told you, uh, chapter 13, carbon and important element. It is from our science one section. Uh, though we have the textbook for nine standard, that is a single textbook, but uh, uh, it is uh, divided into two parts, that is science one and science two. And this chapter falls under uh, section one of science, or we can say science one also. So uh, before starting this uh, chapter, uh, I'll just uh, want you to go through the screen and secondly, you should all have your textbooks with you all so that it could be very easy for you all to get the lesson understand very well. In your textbook, the page number for the chapter is 138, 138, okay? And the same things we'll be seeing there only. In this chapter, for today, we will be studying about the occurrence of carbon, properties, allotropes. Up to allotropes, only one of the allotropes we will be studying. And later on, later on, if the lecture continues for the next day, then we will be seeing hydrocarbons, carbon dioxide, occurrence and methane, and so on. So actually, this is the overall topics for this chapter. So let us start with the occurrence of carbon. Before that, I have some questions for you, uh, which I will only be answering because I think you all are muted. At the very beginning of the chapter, one, two, three questions are there. The first one is, what is an element? And what are the different types of elements? What is an element? Elements are the substances, materials which are found, which occur naturally in the earth. And what are their types? What are their different types of elements? The different types of elements are metals, non-metals, and Metalloids. Anna? Then the next question is what remains behind on complete combustion of any organic compound? Any organic compound. Whenever we burn any organic compound, what is left behind? It is a very familiar uh, thing. Uh, and now the season which, is, which was going on and it is almost ending up the winter season. So hope, I hope okay, when, whenever you were in your village place, so there was a very, it was very cold over there. And uh, we, uh, we have enjoyed uh, shakni over there by burning all the, gathering all the le uh, dried leaves, uh, wood, wooden sticks, whatever you get over there. When we burn it, we get a black color uh, smoke and black color powder also. So what is that? It is nothing but carbon. Since our chapter is about carbon only, so definitely the questions which we are going through, they are taking us to the chapter. They are taking us to the name of the chapter that is carbon. So when we burn any inorganic uh, organic compound, sorry, we get carbon over there, the leftover is carbon. What type of element is carbon? What type of element? I told you the types of elements, they are metals, non-metals, and metalloids. These three words, or mostly the two words, metals and non-metals, you are studying ever since 
sixth standard, seventh standard. Forget about eighth and ninth. You are studying online only, and uh, actually, you may not have gone through the words in eighth and ninth because uh, we we are suffering from this pandemic period. But in sixth and seventh, metals and non-metals, you have gone through these words. What are metals? Metals are they have many properties uh, for metals and non-metals also likewise. And in our daily life also, we use many metals. Like the utensils which we use in your house, they are, some of them are made up of aluminum. They are metals. They are made up of metals. Element aluminum. And it falls under the type of metals. We also use jewelry like gold, silver, that is jewelry, no? What are they made up from? They are made up from metals only. So gold is a metal, silver is a metal. And likewise, there are also some non-metals. The difference between both of them is mainly, okay, metals are good conductors, they are hard, uh, they are uh, brittle also sometimes, and uh, 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 sorry, they are hard, they are, they have, uh, they possess ductility, malleability. For non-metals, you can say, okay, um, they are poor conductors of electricity, they are not hard, and also they, um, they are brittle, likewise. So this makes the difference between metals and non-metals. There are also some elements which have the property of metals also, and at the same time, they have the property of non-metals also. So the, such, such elements are called as metalloids. Such elements are known as metalloids. And uh, one such example is silicon. Silicon is a metalloid. It possesses the property of metals also, non-metals also. So what about our carbon? What type of carbon is, what type of element is carbon? So let me tell you, carbon is a non-metal. And uh, give some information about it. Information, if we'll uh, go on to give about it. Just now, one question which we have gone through, okay, what is left behind after the combustion of, uh, complete combustion of uh, organic compounds? So whatever the, uh, whatever the dark smoke, dust, what that is gathered over there, it is nothing, but, it was nothing but carbon. So we can say carbon is black, then carbon has, uh, um, many allotropes and uh, most of our most of our uh, substances which we use in our daily lives are consist of carbon consist of carbon this we can say more about carbon uh, one more example is been given there uh, or an activity and uh, I will read it for you so that you could uh, get an idea. Like we have to take some milk in an evaporating dish. Evaporating dish is a um, laboratory instrument which is used in science lab. Heat the evaporating dish on a burner, on a Bunsen burner. Heat it. We have taken some milk. We Now we are heating it. What remains behind at the bottom of the evaporating dish on complete evaporation of the milk? what remains behind at the bottom bottom of that dish. That evaporating dish is actually uh, made up of glass, transparent glass. So we have to see when the milk is completely dried up or it is evaporated, what is left behind at the bottom of the evaporating dish. Another one, take some small samples of sugar, wool, dry leaves, hair, seeds, split pulses, and plastic in separate test tube. All these uh, materials, like sugar in one test tube, wood in other test tube, dried leaves in other one test tube, likewise. Hit each test tube and observe the changes taking place in the substances. When will you go on hitting, you could see the change over there. What is the black substance remaining in each test tube indicate. 
in each test tube and uh, one thing will be there k some might take a short time to uh, get uh, get burn for getting burn and some might take a long time but they will burn they will burn completely they will get comb uh, combusted so once they get completely burn observe what is left behind in the test tube you will find a black substance in each test tube what is that it is nothing but carbon and when you when you go all through all the all those examples all those uh, uh, substances like sugar we use daily sugar in for making tea for having milk or for making some uh, um, sweet dishes wood wood also we use when you come to school you have wooden tables to sit on dry leaves dry leaves also we don't use but uh, there are also somewhere there also part of our lives like uh, when we if we have a big angan in our house and there is a tree so daily there will be many leaves falling uh, which are for, which are, which are fallen down and daily we have to sweep it and collect over it and sometimes burn also it then hair seeds split pulses pulses all the dal and whatever we eat daily dal so like sometimes moong dal sometimes uh, arhar dal and uh, tur arhar means tur many are there so we use daily no and plastic also plastic so it has become a, a part of of our lives hai na and when we when we burn them will come to know ke a black uh black uh, powder or a black uh, layer is formed around the um this uh, test tube it shows it is nothing but carbon okay so this were this was this is some of the questions to take you to the uh, topic that is carbon the rest of thing that is an important i will leave it but the one word which actually makes whole chapter carbon so all these things were whatever i have explained you and i have uh, just read out it was just to let you know that we are going to study today about carbon and really it is amazing carbon it is amazing and uh, and we get in our daily lives also carbon is uh, from that examples only we can get to know ke uh, carbon is uh, of so much importance give all our daily needs 90% of our daily needs and whatever the substances which we use we'll be going uh, through that uh, table and uh, when you will draw a conclusion you will come to know Okay, yes definitely carbon is an important element of our lives so let us see about the occurrence of carbon okay, where is carbon in our nature how does it occur how does it occur where does it occur and how we come to know about carbon so if we later on in your uh, next standard i think you will be studying carbon dating so it is a very nice and uh, amazing topic which you will get to know which you will get to know about carbon dating and then you will come to know that our universe is uh, in but uh, it uh, it forms a major portion of carbon about seeing or going through carbon we will come to know that carbon is available abundantly in the nature at a large amount huge amount and it occurs in free state as well as in combined state in this chapter we will be studying the properties of non metallic element carbon let me tell you a carbon is non metallic Yeah, metals, non-metals. So carbon is non-metal. Carbon is a non-metal. 
and uh, later on we'll be studying properties and allotropes so uh, i am sharing this uh, uh, slide for the occurrence of carbon let us see here the same you are having in your textbook also on page number 138 the symbol of carbon is c capital c always always remember whenever you will write any element any element all the time you are not going to write carbon only and in 10th standard you are having chapter carbon compounds carbon forms carbon is so amazing carbon is so uh, versatile okay it has the capacity of forming many many compounds by combining with other elements so later you will study so just remember ki whenever you will write the symbol of any element let us take carbon we will start from carbon let us take hydrogen let us take sulfur let us take sodium always you will be writing the symbol of that particular element with a capital letter atomic mass of carbon is 12 the total uh, atoms and their weight mass means weight all the atoms in carbon and the mass of carbon is 12 atomic number of carbon is 6 electronic configuration it depends on atomic number okay, the first shell have two atoms electrons the second shell has four electrons therefore the electronic configuration is 2 and 4 since four falls in the second shell or the last shell for carbon therefore the valency of carbon becomes 4 carbon is a non metallic element i am be i am telling you constantly i am repeating it okay after this you all have one table over there on page number 138 and you are you are being asked to prepare a list of all the substances or the objects that you use in your daily life from morning till night and divide those substances into the columns in the following table make a list of all 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 things which you use throughout the day throughout the day right from your eating right from your walking right from your any activity right from your you, you are uh, using materials all your uh, materialistic things make a list and divide them in metallic objects or then glass objects or then of glass objects other substances i have written a few ones and i hope ki you would get a long list the metallic objects i wrote compass box staircase tongs earthen or glass objects i wrote mirror it is a glass object earthen pots like a uh, surai or matka will say we say in hindi so it is earthen pots we use it for cold water in uh, summer season secondly other substances i wrote food stuffs clothes medicines fuels and wooden objects other substances okay now look at the list of the object in the last column last column it contain food stuffs clothes medicines fuels wooden objects etc carbon is the common and important constituent of, in all these substances last column carbon is the common compound constituent in all those things food stuffs the food we eat clothes we wear medicines we have fuels also we use for getting heat and energy wooden objects when we burn wooden objects we get heat and light so we can say ki wood is also fuel only you will come to know ki all these substances they contain carbon as their main element 
Okay. One more thing I would like to tell you. There's one more question over there in on page number 138. You please uh, just listen. And if you're having the textbook, it is very, very good. One question is there, ki what is a compound and how are compounds formed? Okay, what is a compound? And how they are formed? How compounds are formed? Compounds obtained directly or indirectly from plants and animals are called organic compounds. The compounds which we directly get from nature, they are organic compounds. And compounds which are obtained from minerals are inorganic compounds. And let me tell you, all the organic compounds, they contain carbon. Plants and animals, we get various compounds from them. So they are called organic compounds. So in short, I would like to tell you, okay, all the organic compounds, like the, all the plants, all the animals, they contain carbon. Carbon is the main element, even in cellular DNA and RNA that transfer hereditary characteristics from one generation to another generation. One generation to another generation. Even in our DNA, which is the DNA carries the hereditary material from one generation to another generation. That also contains carbon. Okay? The question was, okay, what is a compound? A compound is the one which is formed from, which is formed from one of two elements. One or from two elements. Okay. A compound is a substance which is formed from one or two elements by mixing them together. Okay. Next thing, again, occurrence of carbon. I hope you can see this uh, slide. And now you are on page number, page number 139. The carbon word, the, the name carbon, it is derived from Latin word carbo, which means coal, which means coal. Carbon is found in the atmosphere inside the earth's crust and in all living organisms. Living organisms means all plants and animals. Carbon is present in fuels like wood, coal, charcoal, coke, petroleum, petroleum, natural gas, natural gas, marsh gas, etc. Carbon is present in compounds like carbonates, carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. Carbon is present in compounds like carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. Like carbon get mixed with other elements and form carbonates and form carbonates. Carbon is found in free state as diamond, graphite, and fullerenes. As I told you earlier, the carbon is found in free state as well as combined state. So in free state, we can say that carbon is found in the state as diamond, graphite, fullerenes. And about com combined state, like carbohydrates, like carbonates, hydrogen, uh, calcium carbonate, sodium carbonate, calamine, zinc carbonate also we can say. Means carbon will, will get clubbed with other uh, element and form a um, combined element, a combined compound, combined compound. So two states, free state, combined state. Free state is three are there, diamond, graphite, 
fullerene and combine since carbon is uh, uh, tetravalent it possesses the property of catenation so it forms various compounds innumerable compounds with other with combining with other elements you could see the source of carbon in the given slide how carbon is uh, occurring in nature at various places like i, I told you here also k we just discussed that carbon uh, is uh, found in the atmosphere uh, in, inside the earth crust and in all living organisms okay same thing will be repeating in a different way might be this will help you uh, for uh, your activity question okay if you are uh, if you ask for occurrence of carbon through this uh, uh, tree diagram then you can answer likewise okay uh, carbon occur in two forms free state common state free state it is diamond graphite and fullerene the one is not written here diamond graphite and fullerene and combined state we can say carbon dioxide fossil fuels carbonates organic compounds many organic compounds when carbon and uh, hydrogen they both combine with each other and then they forms many organic compounds many organic compounds so this was about occurrence of carbon in the activity form next if we'll go through we will be seeing properties of carbon like the allotropic nature of carbon but before that we have to study about allotropy what is allotropy though this word is new for you properties we have uh, gone through most of the times we come across the word properties properties like properties of metals properties of non metals the properties of these that various various things are whenever we go through the chapters and all so now allotropy the word allotropy is also one of the property of carbon property in other words we can say feature special character okay feature main feature special feature so possessing allotropy or uh, following allotropy or carrying allotropy is one of the property or feature of carbon the element carbon let us see what is allotropy then it is also on page number 139 only there are some elements in nature they occur in different forms and their chemical properties are same some elements they are present in the nature and uh, but their forms are different they have different forms so the chemical properties of these elements like carbon carbon may be having uh, again two three forms two three forms it will be having so their chemical properties will be same chemical properties like their constituents and all and if they react with other element also more or less same compounds are formed likewise chemical properties are same of such elements uh, though uh, of whatever we are talking about okay, there are some elements in nature uh, they have one or more forms they have one or more forms and their chemical properties are same their chemical properties are same but their physical properties are different physical properties means what their appearance their appearance like how they appear one of them will be appearing like a cone shape then the some other element it will be appearing uh, in a, um, a what you can say spherical shape for example i am telling you to get you know what is actually physical property physical property like like uh, physical property means we can uh, more talk about uh, the appearance only okay so how are this uh, um, uh, allotropy not only carbon there are also some more examples which follow the property of allotropy so allotropy is k the elements which uh, have same chemical properties 
uh, but different uh, physical properties and also they occur in nature more than in more than one form so such property is known as allotropy other than carbon sulfur and phosphorus are those sulfur and phosphorus phosphorus are those ones which have which follow the property of allotropy okay now the allotropes of carbon allotropes of carbon what will be the allotropes of carbon now then they will be having the crystalline shape crystalline forms it will be of a crystalline form see here i have made one more here activity a based question or a web a web like question okay allotropes of carbon it contains uh, crystalline form first one and second one is the non crystalline form the crystalline forms one are the diamond graphite fullerene diamond you can understand i'm not sure whether you have seen graphite yes we are also familiar with graphite not with fullerene but we are very familiar about diamond and graphite not about the real diamonds but whenever we uh, say the word diamond immediately uh, one picture or the shape of diamond comes into our mind so at that time you should understand k the, the crystalline form it is having crystal it is having a particular shape so those which have shapes proper shape we can say them that they are crystalline they are crystalline forms so examples are diamond graphite and fullerene and non crystalline are coal charcoal coke non crystalline they are so when we will, we will be studying about diamond graphite and fullerene uh, we will get to know about their crystalline uh, we will get to know about their properties okay, why they are called as uh, crystalline forms of carbon simple the crystalline form of carbon has a regular and definite arrangement of atoms see diamond on page number 139 uh, one picture of diamond is been given i am also now showing you about diamond let me tell you about the allotropic nature of carbon in it i will be uh, telling you about the crystalline forms of carbon and its uh, properties so the crystalline forms has a regular and definite arrangement of atoms proper arrangement proper arrangement one one to one like sometimes with one atom three will be attached sometimes one both side atoms will be attached likewise and this arrangement gives the diamond or the graphite or the fullerene a proper shape then the crystalline uh, compounds they have a high melting point and boiling boiling point yes very high melting point boiling point if you talk about uh, diamond it is the hardest substance found in nature it requires a very 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 high temperature to melt it down very high temperature they have definite geometrical shapes sharp edges and plane surfaces they have definite geometrical shapes geometrical shape they have sometimes they are triangular sometimes they are tetragonal sometimes they are three dimensional so these are all the geometrical shapes okay sharp edges and plane surfaces so same thing the three crystalline uh, shapes of carbon as we have seen earlier in the uh, web chart or the tree diagram k they were the diamond graphite and fullerene so let us study about the diamond let us study about diamond so the first crystalline allotrope of carbon is diamond now i will give you a view for the diamonds isn't it they are amazing they are attractive hai na they are very attractive and they are also very costly at the same time so chal let us study about uh, diamond and uh, have a look about their occurrence and uh, uh, about the properties of diamond so in india diamond is uh, diamonds are mainly found in india mainly in golconda golconda actually it is golconda karnataka and panna madhya pradesh these two are the places where diamonds are found in mines in india one is karnataka other is madhya pradesh panna actually it is a place name name of a place but uh, 
there is also one diamond which is known as panna so since uh, those diamonds are found in panna so that name that name was uh, name is only given to that particular diamonds as panna only hira panna like diamonds are also found in south africa brazil belgium russia and america other than india diamonds are also found in different parts of the world structure of diamond let us see the structure of diamond okay, how diamond is made see here this also you can see in your textbook page number 140 140 this is about the structure of diamond in the diamond every carbon atom is bonded to four neighboring atom c look at the center carbon and that center carbon it will be having four carbon around it neighboring atom and all those neighboring carbon atom they are joined together they are bonded together by covalent bond single bond therefore diamond has a tetragonal three dimensional structure which makes it very hard therefore diamond has a tetragonal three dimensional structure tetragonal why because four carbon are attached on either side of the center carbon so tetragonal and due to the tetragonal arrangement it got it gets the three dimensional structure and that is the reason which makes diamond very very hard okay so this was about the structure of diamond now let us see about the properties of diamond properties of diamond properties of diamond the first one is let us go now one by one i will first make them appear here then i will read it one by one okay the first one is brilliant and pure diamond is the hardest natural substance pure diamond it is the hardest natural substance okay second one is the density of diamond is 3.5 per gram centimeter square q density of diamond what is density density is thickness density of diamond is 3.5 gram per centimeter q the melting point of diamond is 3500 degrees celsius c very high melting point 3500 degree celsius that is very 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 big even at a temperature of 36 uh, 30, 37 38 39 uh, we feel very hot 39 40 degree temperature so you could imagine ki what is the temperature uh, which is uh, used for melting diamond it is 3500 degree celsius okay very high so uh, we as we have seen in crystalline uh, uh, initial uh, slide ke the melting point and boiling points of crystalline allotropes are very high when diamond is heated at 800 degree celsius in the presence of oxygen carbon dioxide is given away carbon dioxide get removes away because diamond is heated in the presence of oxygen in this process no other product beside carbon dioxide is formed so there is one condition k it is heated at a temperature of 800 and degree 800 degree celsius in the presence of oxygen so at that time only carbon dioxide is given away carbon dioxide gets removed and other than carbon dioxide no more substances are formed in this heating process since diamond is very hard so it does not dissolve in any solvent like we are taking diamond and we are having a uh, water and we have uh, uh, what we did uh, we uh, we uh, we put all those diamonds uh, whatever we are having in those in that water so that water will be known as solvent all the time water is not a solvent any solution in which we try to dissolve something so that will be called as a solvent and suppose i will give a common example or the easy one to get you understand uh we are having a uh, glass of water and uh, to the other side you are having one teaspoon of 
sugar or salt now you want to make a solution of salt also and sugar also now you are going to make up till now you are uh, you have kept both those things different only so the water will be the solvent and the sugar will be the solute water solvent sugar or the salt will be the solute so this is to make you understand about the solvent and solute so if we try to dissolve diamond in any any solvent it will not dissolve because it is very hard it is the hardest substance i found in nature sec then the sixth point or the next one is acid or bases do not have any effect on diamond acid or bases they do not have any effect on diamond again same thing it's uh, its nature of being very hard last one is the or the seventh one diamond is a bad conductor of electricity as it does not have free electrons diamond is a very bad conductor of electricity because it does not have free electrons the all those atoms are closely packed together there is no place to move the electrons there is no place in between diamond to move the electron and we all know electricity conducts only when when it have free electrons the electrons will only flow and uh, electricity will be generated so that's why diamond does not have uh, diamond does not have uh, free electrons and therefore it is known as the bad conductor of electricity last one is the uses of uh, diamond uses of diamond again i will uh, make uh, all the points appear here and then we'll read one by one now the uses of diamond the first one first one is diamonds are used in glass cutting and rock drilling machines see for cutting of glass diamonds are used also for rock drilling machines rocks rocks we all know very big uh, uh, stones very very big ones which are known as rocks and um, to break them though the big uh, the actually mountains are uh, exploded with the help of dynamite because they are those are mountains but for rock purpose if drilling is to be done so such machines are used which are which are uh, uh, which consists of uh, diamond and with the help of that machine uh, the rock is the rocks are drilled second and the very easiest one uses use of diamond is diamonds are used in ornaments you know diamond jewelry third one diamond diamond leaves are used in eye surgery now it is a medical part in eye surgery diamond leaves are used fourth one diamond dust is used for polishing other diamonds yes when diamond is cut the the uh, the dust gather over there you know so that dust that diamond dust is used to polish other diamonds then fifth one diamond is used to make windows giving protection from radiation in space and artificial satellite the windows of artificial satellites we know about the artificial satellites you know like uh, the one which is uh, nasa is carrying out for uh, mission mars india has also carried out mission mangal mission mangal hai na so so that was a artificial satellite that was a artificial satellite and that artificial satellite its windows are prepared its windows are prepared uh using diamond so we can imagine okay, how costly it would be how costly it would be for making uh, the windows of artificial satellites through diamonds so why they are used there are some radiation in space harmful radiations and whatever the machinery that is uh, present in that uh, artificial satellite it should not get uh, uh, disturb or harmed with that radiation so for that diamonds uh, diamond is used for making the windows okay so 
up till now for today's lecture we have come through with uh, only the one form of crystalline carbon that was diamond and this is the evaluation part and uh, i hope uh, you have understood the topics which we have taken today and i uh, i also request you to take the screenshot of this uh, slide and uh, these are some extra questions which are not in your textbook also so you could write it if you have understood today's topic as well okay so i'll just wait for one minute uh, so that you could get uh, this screenshot okay so thank you all for joining have a nice day and happy learning okay we'll meet again